Drop handlebars come in loads of different shapes and sizes, so you can be forgiven for not knowing which ones are going to be the right ones for you. Until now that is, because I'm going to take you through the options. The first point we'll cover is handlebar width. Now road handlebars typically come in sizes from 38 to 46 centimetres wide and typically you would choose a handlebar based on your height, except that height doesn't really have anything to do with it, it's actually the width of your shoulders. So traditionally you would choose a handlebar that is the same width as the distance between your AC joints, so that's the knobbly bits on your shoulders there, so that when you hold the handlebars in the drops your knuckles are just outside the line of your shoulders. However, there are two really important points to bear in mind here. Firstly, a narrower handlebar puts you in a more aerodynamic position, but a wider handlebar actually makes the bike feel more stable. It's easier to control. So you can always size up or down depending on your priorities. So I, for example, use a 44 centimeter wide handlebar on my cyclocross bike for more stability and a 42 on my road bike so that I'm a little bit more aero. Now, of more importance than the width, for me at least, is the reach, which is the distance between the horizontal part of your handlebar here and the furthest extent to which the handlebar reaches forward here, generally where you'd mount your brake hoods. Now, different handlebar designs will have very different reaches, and essentially what it does is it governs how far forward you will need to stretch. Once again, taller riders are generally prescribed a larger figure, so a longer reach, and that's because it's in proportion to their height, whereas smaller riders will have a lesser reach for the opposite reason. And to a certain extent, your poor choice of handlebar with a too long or too short to reach can be offset by changing your stem either for a shorter or a longer one. But I would say that if you are struggling to reach your hoods and your brakes, or your bike just feels a little bit difficult to handle because you're too stretched out, I would look at my handlebars before I look to change my stem. Now one final important measurement is the drop. So that is the distance between the top of your handlebar here and the bottom. Now a bar with a shorter drop is going to make the transition from riding in the brake hoods to the drops much, much easier. And it will require a lot less stretching of your back and your hips and your shoulders, whereas a handlebar with more drop is going to require much more movement. Generally speaking, again, you would choose the drop based on your height, with taller riders requiring more drop. But also, your flexibility is an important factor here as well. And we do know that a lot of people struggle when riding on the drops, and you can remedy it to a certain extent by raising up your stem. But then, you may well find that actually your hoods are then too high up. So it's at this point, we'd really strongly recommend that you look at getting a compact handlebar to one that has much less drop. And then, as an added bonus, you'll also find that with a compact handlebar, it's much easier to reach your brake levers when riding in the drops. And that's a really important consideration for all of us, but particularly for those with small hands. So, I suppose a lot of people would benefit from a handlebar with much less drop. To put it in some kind of context, a long drop handlebar will be about 150 mil, medium is about 135, and then a compact bar will be about 120. The shape of the drop also varies from bar to bar. Broadly speaking, there are three main types. Traditional, which as the name suggests, has been around pretty much since the dawn of handlebars, and crucially, since before we had brake lever mounted shifters. Then, you've got ergonomic, which is much less curved. In fact, it has a flat section on the drops here to make it more comfortable to spend more time here. And then, you've got these, the newest type, which have a kind of variable radius and a really pronounced top flat section here. Now there are a couple of things that you want to consider when choosing the shape of your drop. Firstly, can you get your brake hoods in the right place? For me, I like a really flat transition, so you can see I get exactly that on these handlebars. And then secondly, when you're riding in the drops, you want to minimise the amount of bending in your wrist. So, a nice smooth transition from forearm to wrist. So those are the aspects of handlebars that you can change. The big question is would you be more comfortable or faster using a different handlebar? Now, to a certain extent, it is really tough to choose the perfect handlebar unless you can compare it with one that you've already got. But Profile, who make the handlebars that I'm using to demonstrate with today, actually have developed an interesting technique. 
It's called the drive system and it requires you to measure the width of the palm of your hand and then from that you can determine the optimum shape and size of handlebar. And from a very unscientific poll of one, me, it did seem to work because the handlebar recommended this one, the 120, would have been the one that I'd have chosen anyway. Whereas this one, the 135, which is the next size up, is to my taste, frankly, enormous. How do I know that it'd be too big for me though? Well, with my brake levers in the preferred position, and that's where I spend most of my time, remember, I would have to get a shorter stem. And then I also know from looking at it that if I was to spend any length of time in the drops, I would end up with a sore neck and sore shoulders. So the important points to remember then, if you struggle reaching the drops, then you wanna look at getting a handlebar with a shorter drop, so like a compact handlebar. If you struggle to reach the brakes, then you definitely would benefit from getting a compact handlebar. If you wanna get more aero, then get a narrower bar. If you want more stability from your bike, then get a wider handlebar. And then one final thing I would say is that you should really look to embrace modern handlebar designs because, to my mind at least, they work much better with modern brake levers and shifters and also with modern bike positions. Now, given that the general theme of this video is one of increasing comfort, you're probably gonna be looking to get more comfortable on your bike. So, a cracking video for you to watch right now is how to get more comfortable on your road bike. You can get through to it just by clicking over there. Or for something a little bit different, but still handlebar related, why not click down there to see how you can fit clip-on aero bars to your handlebars and also get the optimum position. Before going to either of those though, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe.